Five American families are celebrating today as their loved ones who were wrongfully imprisoned in Iran for years are now on their way home as part of a prisoner exchange. But the deal to get them back here is being heavily criticized, especially among Republicans on Capitol Hill. They argue that allowing Tehran to access $6 billion in previously blocked oil revenue will only help fund Iran's terrorism and nuclear program. They point to the Iranian president's own words when he told Lester Holt last week that the money is Iran's and Iran will spend it as it sees fit. Joining us now is National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications, John Kirby, who sprinted all the way over here from the U.N. on the busiest day of the year here in New York City. Thank you so much for getting over here. We appreciate it. Um, I, I do want to get your response to the criticism, but I do first need to ask about how they're doing. I know the Americans flew from Iran to Qatar. They had a doctor's checkup, and now they're on their way back here. Can you tell us how that checkup went? Uh, as far as we know, they're all in relatively good health. It was a quick uh, experience. So I think what we want to make sure is when they get back to the States, and they are in the air now coming back to the States, that they get uh, additional access, not just to physical health care, but mental health care, too. They've been through an incredible ordeal. We want to make sure that they get all the support that they need as they integrate back into society. I mean, they, some of them were in Evan Prison, which is notoriously the worst prison in, yeah. in Iran. What did it take to get this deal done? Some of them have been there for years. Well, in, in fact, Mr. Namazi, it's been since 2015, so eight years, going on yeah. eight years. Uh, months and months of hard work by this administration, the State Department in particular, uh, all the way from the beginning of the administration. This is something we've been working on for, for a long, long time. And you can imagine that negotiations like this, especially with a regime like the one in Tehran, that's not going to go smoothly. It's not always going to go without wrinkles and problems, and this one was no different. Um, the House Foreign Affairs Chairman, uh, Michael McCall, is, has been critical of the decision sure. to, to make this deal, specifically the $6 billion uh, money that's been handed back over. Uh, he says, even though the administration claims these funds are limited to humanitarian transactions, we all know that transactions are difficult to monitor and that money is fungible. There's no question this deal will free up funds for Iran's malign activities. What is the administration doing? What can they do to make sure this money is not used improperly? We have a very rigorous set of controls on the way that the regime uh, can request withdrawals for this funding. And I think it's really important. There's a fundamental misunderstanding. The regime will never get to touch the money. They can make a request for certain humanitarian products, medical supplies, food, agricultural, um, and then we will supervise a process by which uh, fully qualified vendors will go procure that material and then deliver it into Iran. So the, the people that will really benefit are the Iranian people, who, of course, we have no beef So they're with. not getting cash. They're not getting cash. They're not going to, they can't just cut a check and, and pull out the money for whatever they want, whenever they want. Uh, I heard what President Raisi told Lester Holt, and he's just wrong. They don't get to spend it any way they want. There's a rigorous set of p controls on this. The other thing, Katie, that I'd say is we can stop a transaction in the middle of it if we feel like it's going to be diverted or used. How, in does, some... that, how does that work? How do you well, stop we have, we, again, working with the cutteries and working with these vendors and, of course, uh, with uh, oversight provided in general by the U.S. Treasury Department, we'll have enough visibility that we'll be able to stop a transaction uh, if we think it's going awry. We'll also be able to refreeze the funds if we think that Iran, Iran's going to cheat on this. As for the other argument that, well, this frees them up, they can spend money. Look, we have already been holding Iran accountable for all their destabilizing activities, saying Sanctions last week, sanctions today, and we've increased our medical, our, our they're, they're military. The, if they're not using the money for food, for medical supplies, that they do have more. And I know we've sanctioned them. We continue to sanction them, but. Do okay, but the sanctions work in that way? But so two things here. One, it's not like they get all six billion. They can't just make a withdrawal for all six billion at a time. It'll so be they might parceled get a out. A couple hundred thousand dollars here and it'll there, be a couple million dollars yeah, here. Right. And there. It'll be parceled out in smaller amounts. Uh, and then again, we're not going to turn a blind eye to what Iran's doing. We haven't yet. We're not going to do that going forward. Is there any hope of reopening the negotiations for the Iran nuclear deal? Does this make it easier to do so? No, this is not tied to the Iran nuclear deal and at even all. Even if it's not tied, does it does it uh, does it does the soil get tilled in a way that allows this to to happen not, again? Not, not really. This was not about trying to get some other diplomatic benefit out of it. It really was about getting these Americans home. Now, look, um, we still believe that diplomacy is the right way to prevent 
uh, Iran from getting a, a nuclear weapon. Uh, but right now, the diplomatic effort is moribund. There's really not any movement there. We're mostly focused on the other destabilizing activities and, of course, their nuclear ambitions through other means. We got to make sure the president has options and capabilities available to him so that we can meet that promise of them never getting a nuclear weapon. I assume you wouldn't make this deal, or the White House wouldn't make this deal if they thought it would encourage more hostage taking. Why won't this? Uh, this is not a new behavior for Iran. Uh, that's why the State Department has designated Iran as a high risk for detention. Uh, this is not something new to the mullahs or to the regime. Um, and again, we urge Americans not to go, particularly dual national. Do not go to Iran. Uh, don't do business there. Uh, if you're there, you need to find a, a way to get home. Part of this deal was um, that five Iranians here were, um, uh, their charges were, explain, explain what happened with the five Iranians that were here and why two of them are staying. So f five of them, not all of them had been charged and convicted, I think, three... Nonviolent crimes, right? All nonviolent crimes, mostly in the realm of uh, sanctions evasion, that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, of the five, only two chose to go back to Iran. The other three are staying oh, here for personal reasons of their own. We'll make sure that uh, all that is done in accordance with our, our, our legal process and our legal system here. But all nonviolent crimes, and again, only two went back. And then another thing to remember is it's not just five we got back today, it's seven, because the wife of one and the mother of another were not allowed to leave Iran. Even though they weren't charged or convicted of a crime, they couldn't leave the country. Now they're on that plane coming home. Um, this is all happening um, in interesting timing. Uh, the year anniversary of uh, Masa Amini's death was Saturday. Um, and there's been some speculation that Iran made this deal and timed this deal in order to take attention away from that, especially as they were visiting the U.N. today. Well, if that, if that was their intent, they failed, because on Friday we issued new sanctions against uh, uh, entities in Iran that are continue to persecute pro uh, protesters, innocent protesters in Iran. And again, we saw additional sanctions today. Um, this is a good day for these five families, and that's really what we're focused on. Um, what are the status of protests in Iran right now surrounding Masa Amini? Uh, I, they, there are, there's still a protest movement that's active. It's not quite as uh, large or, uh, or as vociferous as it was uh, before, but there are still protesters uh, in Iran that want to see better rights, better human rights uh, observed. The House GOP, their current budget proposal does not include any Ukraine aid funding. Why does the White House think it's so important to have that in there? Because we have had numerous conversations, including just last week when the National Security Advisor went up to, to, to Capitol Hill, spoke with members on both sides of the aisle. Uh, we're comfortable that the leadership in the House, they understand what's at stake here in Ukraine, and they have been uniformly supportive of supporting you Ukraine, all the way the from Speaker McCarthy on down. Votes, though, that's the issue, huh? The, they, they are, they are clearly in support. Uh, they can, you know, they can manifest this amongst uh, their fellow Republicans. But we believe that the that there's still a lot of support there, both in a bicameral and in a bipartisan way. And then, and the voices, though they are growing louder, they are still in the minority in the House in terms of the ones pushing back on support. And look, we're going to all get a. A chance to hear from President Zelensky tomorrow and then again on Thursday at the White House where he can make his case, not just to the American people, but to members of Congress. We're also going to hear from President Biden tomorrow. Uh, can you give us a preview of that? He's looking forward to this opportunity to address the General Assembly. I think you're going to see a full-throated defense of support for Ukraine and why that's important, not just to our national security interests, but the whole idea of sovereignty and the U.N. Charter itself. You're going to hear him talk about climate change, the existential threat that, that poses, and how we all need to keep working on a clean energy transition. You're going to hear him talk about economic development and infrastructure and investment opportunities in the so-called global south, lower and middle income countries that have been really hurt by this war in Ukraine and efforts to try to help them get onto a, a sounder economic footing. So uh, there's an awful lot packed into this speech the president's looking forward to. I would be remiss if I did not ask you about the missing F-35. Any idea that you can tell us right now about where that plane might be? What happened? Well, we're staying in touch with the Pentagon as much as we can. Right now, we just don't know where that aircraft is. Uh, we're glad that the pilot was able to eject safely and make sure that he gets the medical care he needs. He talked about a mishap. Any idea what the mishap was? No clue right now. I'm sure that they will conduct a full investigation, but first they will need to really try to find find the aircraft. And then they'll have a chance to talk to the to the uh, aviator uh, when they get a chance. Um, and I know it's been a lightning round, but I, I've been very curious about this, and we haven't had you on yet to talk about it. Musk and Starlink, and this idea that he yeah. was able to, to geofence and not allow the Ukrainians uh, to attack a bunch of Russian warships. Is the White House concerned about so much power with one man? I think what we're concerned about, Katie, is making sure that the Ukrainians are able to ac access that and other like technologies to help them 
fight this war. And of one uh, person. Uh, we want them to have access to that, of course, but also to other technologies. I can't confirm the accounts in the book, but I can confirm that we have worked with industry to see what can be done to continue to help Ukraine with those kinds of uh, geolocation capabilities so that they can better defend themselves. Is the White House in touch with Musk? Uh, I, I can tell you that there's been conversations, but, uh, but that's really as far as I'm going to go. <laughs> uh, 